last year's class. Uh, another six mm-hmm. four, quite frankly, physically very similar to Jack Janicki. You know, six yeah. four, 180 pounds. This, you know, he's out of Indiana, yeah. and we obviously didn't have the opportunity to talk to you at that point. But yeah. what did you think of Connor's game? Um, how does he translate to kind of this this level? I loved his game. Um, I watched him uh, multiple times last year with Indy, Indiana Elite and the Adidas. Back to the Adidas, the street stripes we go. Mm-hmm. Um, six four sniper. I mean the his ability to knock down shots from the perimeter uh, tends to overshadow other parts of his game. Just because that, if I'm, if you're going to make me say, what's the strongest part about his game? It, it's his ability to knock down shots. Like he, he's knocking down shots, but he's a scorer, right? So he's like, he's got great instincts. Um, I, I feel like, you know, and, and the thing that gets overshadowed is his ability as a playmaker, whether it's for himself or his teammates, like he, he gets to the rack. It's not mm-hmm. just shooting. Like he's, you don't score 70, over 1,700 points in high school um, by being one-dimensional because that's easy to stop. Like, if, if all you're going to do is shoot, and even if you're shooting 100%, well, I can I can get in your uh, get in your, your grill and, you know, face guard you and stuff. No, but he's getting the ball. He's going by people. He's got – he's shifty, and he's athletic, too. Like, I've seen the kid East Bay in warm-ups. Like, I mean, between the legs, for real. Um, so – yeah, I, I mean, he was another one. I always talk about guys like I don't know what we're watching, but he, I saw him give some, some five star. I'm gonna leave their names out of, it, but I've seen him give some five star kids buckets in that Adidas gauntlet. Uh, well, I shouldn't say gauntlet. Sorry, Adidas. Adidas three SSB. Um, but yeah, definitely a guy I've always been very impressed with. Great size, six three, six four. Um, depending on how he wears his hair, but you know, a guy definitely who's you can give him the ball and say score, and he's going to get you that bucket. Now you're getting Badger fans excited talking about somebody in warm-ups going between the legs with the yeah, Isaiah Ryder. He, he Look it up. I'm t- I think he even has videos of it, but he definitely used to do it in the summer. So let me ask you this then, because I thought one of his – so I always thought when you had a player with um, a Seagian's mold, like that kind of Midwestern 6'3 shooter, he always got typecast. Like uh, he's just – I always thought he, he had a really – unique ability to create space, hit tough shots, shoot off the move, shoot off pin downs, but also, like you said, get to the rack and some three-level scoring. So the question I wanted to ask you is, does he have upside as a primary, potentially, again, we're always talking potential with with kids who haven't even played a minute of D1 basketball, but could he potentially be the best scorer or the second best scorer on a really good team? Absolutely. Absolutely. He has that three-level scoring ability and he's efficient on all three levels. The best part is, he, he understands game situations, so he has a great feel. And he's a guy who – I said this about Gabe Cups. Um, you're not – you read Shepard's the same way, um, who is like this Tyler Eulis. You're, ne- you're not going to speed me up, right? He's mm-hmm. that way. Like, it, I get it. You, you think you're going to come out here and lock me up because you're athletic and you're long and wide. I've seen this with him last summer. Um, and they'll, like, try and get a five-second half because they think that they can lock him up for whatever reason. Um, and he'll just be so cool as a fan, but he's going to get to his spots. You're not going to stop me from getting to my spots and you're not going to speed me up. I'm going to go at my own pace and I'm going to make the right read. And it's usually, usually has something to do with him scoring, but he's, he's a really good playmaker. The vision, mm-hmm. vision is definitely there. He can definitely get a piece of the paint and kick out. So he's a high IQ guy too. And a guy that you guys are going to love. I really believe that. I wanted to tie it into – last week we had you on the show. We talked about uh, John Blackwell, Gus Yaldin, and we talked about shooters with high IQ, right? Yeah. And I wanted to bring that back to Asegian because for, for the Badgers, really the last couple of years, there's been no shooting. E- even even Johnny Davis going to the NBA wasn't a great shooter from distance. It was Brad Davidson and a whole bunch of just really, really tough shot mate. I mean, people who just weren't hitting shots. So yeah. it looks like they've attacked that with Yaldin, Blackwell, yeah. Asegian – um do all those players kind of look like the badgers are recruiting a certain mold here yeah well it's clearly they want to add some firepower from that for the for the reasons you mentioned and uh the reason you're going for a guy with a high iq shooter and it sounds like well yeah you're going to go for a high but they're not out there like that so Mm. be clear that every shooter is not all shooters are not created equal so you got a lot of guys who are shooters and they're wired they've always been told you got the neon green light when you're open you let it fly and that's how most of them are Right there, I, I was a shooter, right? So you know that, oh, do you, if I have any space, I'm letting it fly. I don't care, right? Because I can knock down shots with a hand in my face. Well, he's different. Like, he's the best kind of shooter because, you know, three-point shot is the ultimate equalizer in basketball, right? So 
you're always keeping the defense off. But they have to have an account for you at all times because of your you're so dangerous from the perimeter. Well, if you're a high IQ guy, you know how to use that to your advantage. You know how to go in there and get a piece of the paint and then kick out to another shooter, right, for a, not a good shot but a great shot. So you know how to go by and get a guy on your hip, dish out to a teammate, drop it off to the big man, or just finish through contact, you know, and go to the line or get the and one. So he's a high IQ guy, which is completely different from mm-hmm. uh, just a shooter. Yeah, and the guy's probably going to fit in really good with you yeah. talking the, the Yaldens, the Blackwells. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Chucky Hepburn is on the team, a really another high IQ point guard. I, this is another one I wanted to, and we touched on this in the first segment with John Janicki, but I also wanted to touch on it in Asigian because we talked about offers, right? And Asigian is a guy who, for whatever reason, had some really good mid-major offers. The Murray States, you know, yeah. the, the Dayton's, you know, the, the schools that really do know basketball. Creighton was in there. But for the most part, the big schools didn't come after him very hard. Yeah. At least that's what the offer list kind of indicates. Right. How does a player like that get lost in the shuffle? Because to me, he has that – He again, you talk about skill set. Like, the shooting's going to translate. Right. So – and he's got enh size. As you said, three-level three, three level score, more athletic than he gets credit for. It felt like he was maybe undervalued. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that uh, – unfortunately, that happens more times than it does. And if you really, really, really think about it, um, people don't put a lot of – they're like, oh, well, he's not top 25. We – it's just the nature of humans to be like, oh, well, he's not a McDonald's All-American, Right. So um, those, you know, that's 24 spots, right? doesn't mean top 20, but that's 24 players. But a guy who's like in the 60 to 100 range is probably really good, right? right? You know, um, and so, you know, I think he probably fits that mold. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he probably was even lower. I don't even remember what he was ranked. But um, I, that, he's another one I don't understand because he, he put up numbers in the Adidas gone. I always say this, Gus, same way we talked about Gus. Like these guys are out here producing, but I think sometimes, uh, oftentimes coaches overthink things and coaches, you know, want what they want on the depth chart. And, you know, it just depends. Um, I know he had other schools looking at him, but maybe they didn't pull the trigger on the offer. I know he had interest, you know, from other um, different schools, high major schools. But um, at the end of the day, you want to go somewhere that wants you there, you know, and that's the best advice I've, I ever uh, been told about recruiting, you definitely want to go somewhere that um, wants you bad, not that not a place that will take you. Right. So um, I think you guys are going to reap the benefit of him being undervalued. I do believe I do agree that he was undervalued because, like I said, leaving names out of it, I saw him give a couple five star guys some buckets last year. And it was like that, too. Like, it wasn't like, a, oh, man, he just hit an open shot. Nah, he went past you. And right. he went past you again, and he went past you again. So you can't check him. Now I know that you can't guard him. No, we love hearing that. Um, yeah. we're, I mean, obviously, every team needs needs a shot maker, but we, yeah. Wisconsin really needs a shot maker. So oh, in the next yeah. couple of years, that'll be fun. Yeah. I, I want to finish up here. So we talked a lot about you know the, th- the three-level scoring, the IQ, the athleticism. I agree with you. I, I, I'm really high on the commit. Uh, I, th- I wish they would have added more last year, but I'm really high on Connor. Yeah. However, like, where are you most concerned? Is there a spot where, I mean, a lot of these players, and we talked about this last week, you can say a lot of players need to get you know, a little better here or there. Everyone's coming into college. But is there something specific with his game that that gives you a little bit of pause? Well, he plays with an edge. I, uh, the first thing that I'm thinking uh, when you ask me that is strength. Um, but I'm not, I'm not the guy that says you need to bulk up and get in the gym. Mm-hmm. Two a days. No, I'm not like that because I always use Resi Miller as the example. I use Chet Holmgren as the example. These guys. Are Durant. Like, I mean, Durant couldn't bench press the bar I coming mean, out of college. Guys are like malnutrition, but they're <laughs> giving, giving you 50, right? Right, right. Um, but I mean, I've definitely seen him get bumped off a little bit, you know, uh, different times. And I've, I've seen that be an issue before. Always with specifically guards, you know, on the perimeter, foot speed on the defensive side. Um, a great offensive player is probably going to get past him. Um, so that, but again, that's, uh, that's a, that's a, um, a thing that most guards is specifically uh, point guards and shooting. I say perimeter players, but specifically point guards and scoring guards around his height, for sure. Um, that's always a transition. Like I, I, I talked to a kid, high major kid who was, uh, he was McDonald's all American who told me that, 
who has expressed frustration for not being able to get it defensively because it's just a different level of foot speed. He's like, it's just it's the speed of the game. Like people say, you look at even in the NBA, I've had guys tell me, man, you know, it looks like they're just rolling the balls. That looks like you, you know, I said, but if you go to a game, you see how fast they are. They are, mm-hmm. you know, and at college, it's a different level of speed. And then the NBA, obviously, through the root speed. So those were the those are things I would think would be the biggest transitions for him. Um, tech and on the technical side, right? No, that's great. I mean, that's that's a really good write up, though. A really good uh scouting yeah. report on Connor Sigi, and I think that's going to get Badger fans pretty excited. Yeah. Um, a 